Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be going over the entirety of our beginner's algebra that we are going to see on our SAT. This means all of our previous videos that we have done so far, those have all been our algebra skills in the SAT, and this video is going to be summing up them all in our foundational difficulty level. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe. We have 10 questions to go through here, so make sure to stick until the end. Let's get started. First question here, we have a systems of equations. Let's read through the prompt. Bex and Yin are running errands together. The given systems of equations relates X, the number of errands Bex has to run, and Y, the number of errands Yin has to run. Based on the system, which of the following statements is true? So before even moving to our answer choices, we can start learning about these two equations here. We know that the total number of errands, meaning adding up both Bex's and Yin's errands, is going to be 11. And that to find Yin's number of errands, we need to add 3 to Bex's number of errands, meaning that Yin runs 3 more errands than Bex does. I believe that is in answer choice D, that second statement. So... Answer choice D is correct. Moving to our next question here. What is the slope of the line that passes through these two coordinate pairs in our coordinate plane? Well, here with two coordinate pairs, we're try trying to find the slope. We use our slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2 is negative one-third minus Y1 minus one-third over X2, which is zero minus negative 1 is just plus 1. So we have 0 plus 1 on our denominator, that's just 1, and the negative 1 third minus 1 third is negative 2 thirds. So you have negative 2 thirds divided by 1, or our answer is just negative 2 thirds. Moving to our next question here, which of the following is the graph of the systems of equations? We need to graph each of these lines individually, see where they intersect to find that solution, and then see which of these graphs correctly models that. So with our first equation, we have our y-intercept at negative 1, and we are sloping downwards. So that should match this line right here. Our y-intercept is negative 1, and then our slope is down 2 across 1. So this line does match our first equation. Let's check the second line to see if it matches our second equation. Our y-intercept needs to be at positive 3, and our rise of a run should be up 2 across 1. That does indeed match this other line. So answer choice A is correct. It matches our systems of equations. And our solution is indeed at negative 1, comma 1. Moving to question number 4 here. Super easy. We just have an equation. P minus 18 equals 3. What is the value of P? Whenever we have any equations, no matter how difficult they are, the goal is always to isolate our variable. So how we isolate our P variable, we have p minus 18 equals 3. To get it by itself, we need to get rid of the 18. Minus 18, we get rid of that by adding 18 to both sides. We do 3 plus 18 on our right side, that's 21. So p equals 21. The value of p is 21. Moving to question number 5 here. Benji's flight from Chicago to San Jose took half an hour longer than his return flight from San Jose to Chicago. If Benji's flight from Chicago to San Jose was four and a half hours long, how long was his return flight? So we know that this flight right here, the Chicago to San Jose, took 0.5 hours longer. So 4.5 is 0.5 hours longer, which means to find his return flight, all we need to do is subtract 0.5. 4.5 minus 0.5 is just 4. So answer choice B is correct. Moving to our next one here, we need to find how many solutions does the systems of equations have. And a really good way to check this is that infinite solutions, every term is going to be the same. And we can see here every term is not the same. We have different coefficients for our y variables. With no solutions, we're going to have our coefficients for our variables being equal to each other, but our constants being unequal to each other. We can see here 2y and y are once again not equal to each other. So that only leaves our last scenario, exactly one solution, and that is our answer. 
Moving to our next question here, let's read it out. Dominic is allowed to play up to eight hours of video games this week. They want to play video games for at least four hours this weekend. Which of the following can be used to represent T, the number of hours they can play video games before the weekend? So we need to know, we need to have greater than or equal to four hours left over. So that automatically eliminates answer choice B and answer choice D. We need that greater than or equal to inequality sign. And now we can see here, if we solve this inequality, we get T is greater than or equal to 12 by adding 8 to both sides, obviously. Our T va value cannot even be greater than 8 because we can't go above 8. So that automatically eliminates C. And then if we were to solve for T in this equation, it would look like uh, T is less than or equal to 4, which makes sense. T, our number of hours played before the weekend needs to be less than or equal to 4 in order for our video games on the weekends to be greater than or equal to 4. So answer choice A is correct. Moving to question number 8 here. Bethany sells, sells roses and petunias. The expression 3R plus 2.5P gives the cost in dollars of R roses and P petunias. In what is the cost in dollars of seven roses and eight petunias? So we have two variables here, R and P, and then we are given two values for those variables. Seven equals R, and then A equals P. All we're going to do with these values is just substitute them into our expression. So we do three times seven, that's 21. And then we do 2.5 times eight, that's 20. So now we just do 21 plus 20, our answer to that is 41. So the cost of seven roses and eight petunias is $41. On to our second to last question here. At Andy's Market, the price of a box of brand name cereal is 1.5 times the price of a box of generic cereal. The price of, of a box of brand name cereal is $3.60, which of the following can be used to determine X, the price of the box of generic cereal in dollars. So we know that our brand name cereal is going to be 1.5 times more expensive. So to find our generic cereal, we need to divide our 3.6 by 1.5 somehow. We need to check which of our answer choices ends up dividing our 3.6 by 1.5. With answer choice A, to solve this, we would actually end up multiplying 3.6 by 1.5 in order to isolate the variable. So answer choice A is incorrect. With answer choice B, to isolate our x, we do indeed divide by 1.5. So we do 3.6 divided by 1.5, that would find the correct answer, which means that B is the correct answer. Last question here. Mara is M years old and her younger brother Kyle is K years old. If Mara is 3 years older than Kyle, which of the following correctly expresses K in terms of M? So we, uh, if Mara is 3 years older than Kyle, an expression would be to find Mara's age, we need to add 3 to Kyle's age. We can see here that all of our answer choices have isolated the K. So with this expression, we need to isolate the K. How we do that, we subtract 3 from each side. So M minus 3 equals K. We can obviously uh, change the side. So K also equals M minus 3. Those are the same expressions. B is the correct answer here. And that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. These are all of the skills that we're going to be seeing related to algebra on our SAT. Of course, these are the easiest difficulty level, but stay tuned for future videos where we go over both the medium and advanced difficulty level. I'll see you guys then. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and goodbye.